A spinal cord injury interrupts the communication between the brain and the region of the spinal cord that produces walking, leading to paralysis. To reestablish this communication, we implanted two WeMagine systems composed of 64 electrodes to record the cortical activity associated with the intention to move the lower limbs. The electrocorticographic signals are transferred to a wearable processing unit that predicts the intended movements and translates these predictions into analog modulation of epidural electrical stimulation. This stimulation is delivered through a 16 electrode paddle lead that is implanted over the lumbosacral spinal cord and then connected to an implantable pulse generator. The participant was able to use this brain-spine interface to walk naturally in community settings. Pre-operative planning procedures to optimize the positioning of recording and stimulation implants over the brain and spinal cord. Pre-operative imaging of brain activity during attempted movements of the lower limb identified the region most responsive to the intention to move. The optimal position of the paddle lead was identified using a personalized computational model of the spine, elaborated from high-resolution structural imaging. The final location was optimized intraoperatively based on electrophysiological recordings. As early as day one, we could calibrate a model that enabled the participants to control the relative flexion of the hip from an avatar projected on a screen. We then calibrated an algorithm that converged in less than two minutes to enable the participant to exert gradual control over hip flexor activity in order to flex the leg. Next, we calibrated a brain-spine interface that enabled the participant to walk over ground with crutches. When the BSI was turned off, the participant instantly lost the ability to step. Walking resumed as soon as the BSI was turned back on. The robustness of the algorithm enabled the participant to stand, walk, and stop when desired in the absence of false positive detections that would impair balance. The brain-spine interface enabled natural control of walking, even in complex and changing terrains.
After one year of regular use of the brain-spine interface, the participant reports his experience using the system. I have a spinal cord injury at C5, C6, and recently I've been implanted by a brain-spine interface. So, here's an example. I can start the stim with my brain. I can talk while doing it, and if I want, I can also maintain the stimulation while talking, I'm maintaining now. So this feels more natural. I can control the step length, I can stop here. I can make it bigger. It's, it's freedom, which I didn't have with the, with the foot sensors before. I can stop right now and I can continue whenever I want. The participant had sustained an incomplete cervical injury. Seven years after his accident, and despite intensive physiotherapy, the participant could not walk independently. The participant completed a five-month neurorehabilitation program supported by targeted epidural electrical stimulation of the spinal cord. Completion of this training allowed him to regain basic walking when stimulation was turned off. After implantation of the brain-spine interface, the participant completed 40 sessions of training that further improved walking without stimulation. the participant recovered the ability to walk with crutches without assistance. We designed a system that could be operated by the participant without any assistance. This system includes a walker equipped with an integrated case that embeds all the components of the brain-spine interface. A tactile-based interface allows him to interact with the software to launch an activity, adjust the headset position, and modify the stimulation ranges. This configuration is completed within less than five minutes after which the participant can leverage the brain-spine interface for neural rehabilitation. or to support activities of daily living at home and in the community.